Yes, and now I switch to Joe Bisque. I'm Bosque? coming closer yeah. because of the Bosque. sound. Bosque. Oh, Bosque. Yes. Okay. Oh, so, dear. <laughs> so, Joe, you're known for having competed here in what, 1977? Not here, in Virginia. In the last, Virginia? The last oh, World I Championships in 1976. Okay. In 76, and, and you were a 21 then, year old. Right, and I finished seventh in that race, and then the following year I shipped my boat to England, okay. Hailing Island, for the 77 Worlds, and I finished 16th there. Out of how many competitors? 85. There That's about, pretty, so. pretty impressive. So now, when did when did you start on the foiling moths? I sailed one for the first time in September of 2007. And you and were hooked. I was hooked. I said yeah. I, had to, I had to build one. And you, you are you the only one that built one here? I was the only one sailing a home built here. Yeah. Wow. So. Wow. Did you get a chance to sail one of um, West Coast sailings? I didn't, although I was hoping to sail a boat that was actually tuned and put together and set up right. I'm still having set up problems and yeah, obviously yeah. equipment problems. I broke something yesterday. so Yeah, I know. I was on the boat that towed you in. Yeah. It's a, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yes. I remember it well. <laughs> Apparently not, uh -huh. but that's okay. So, <laughs> so um, what? I'm just curious because I, I look at. I, I'm, I don't know that much about sailing, right. but it seems to me that if they did a PHRF for all the sailors in their boats, not just the boats, but the sailors, like right. they do that, right. that would be very interesting because like, for, like, like you have a homemade boat, you're still challenged with it. Like, you know, it would be interesting if you could ever put into the mix the experience level, the boat level. There it would was, be interesting. There was some talk. Um, about the mothosphere, about breaking the <laughs> breaking the races into uh, professional and amateur classes. Yeah. Uh, you know, once you get 100 boats or so, you have two different fleets. Right, right. Uh, certainly the top 20, 35 folks here were all, you know, full-time. Professionals. Full-on yeah. sailors. Yeah. Uh, and particularly... Of how much of those were actually moth sailors? Because we were, I was talking to George Pete, and he trained with Bora, right. but he didn't train. My understanding is he didn't train on the moth as much as Bora. Well, that's probably true. But yeah. if you look at the number of hours they've got in on moths, yeah. it's still you know it's huge. Phenomenal. I mean, Bora was sailing six days a week. You know, wow. Uh, wow. And George has been doing some big boat stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, the two of those guys have been mothing since. At least a couple of years ago, they were both mm -hmm. in England with me last mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. and um, really good sailors. Well, I assume you're a really good sailor. Well, I've I'm, been around for a long time. I've been around. I'm an old sailor. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably a whole lot better in a boat that doesn't fly out of the water. <laughs> um, I also race classic moths, which are the, oh, really? the older designs, non-foiling non ones. Right. Yeah. And um, I did okay last year. I, was second in the nationals behind Jeff Linton. He was the Rolex Yachtsman of the Year mm -hmm. in 2007. So you know, I mean, that's not too shabby. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you've never been able to go out on one of the new. Have have. What what would it take for you to be able to go out on a tuned new high-end moth? Oh, winning we're, the we're lottery! Putting on, we're putting you on YouTube. So we're winning go the say it. winning the lottery. Let's see, <laughs> fifteen grand. I'd probably get me a you know twenty okay. grand would be nice with all the bells and whistles. And okay, so we're starting a contribution for your retirement fund. That right? would be great. <laughs> uh, right now, I'm still in the boat repair mode. So I bet. you know, it's I bet. it's build, sail, repair, repeat, build, yeah. sail, repair. Do you have to do that with your classic mom? No. Those yeah, because they're sturdy. They're, they're so easy. There's a 75-pound yeah. minimum hull weight, which is very easy to build to, so they're they're bulletproof. Um, I've built eight of those in the past 10 years. So, so tell me how you built your... What, tell me how you built this moth, your foiling moth. Yeah. What, what, what you, if I remember right, you were talking about you were trying to match it to some of the higher end moths. Uh, Bill Beaver designed the boat. He okay. built the first, he built a mold, or had a mold okay. built, and laid up the first hull in 2007, spring of 2007. That's when you first. I sailed his in September of 2007, and I said, I want to build one too. Okay. So I was the second boat out of his mold, and then, um, there have been two others subsequent to that. So there's been four of these hungry beavers. Uh, and we're all on the East Coast and Middle Atlantic region. Uh, we're all 
you know, crummy. <laughs> Meaning? Meaning that the boats are not, you know, set it up against a Mach 2 and it's not going to be... Is it the hull or is it the, is it the rigging it's, and everything? It's not the hull, it's not the rig, it's not the rack, it's all the foils. I mean... Is that what it is? It's the foils. So what would you do? What would well, you do different? Okay, so like, okay, so you get, okay, so you're not going to get your $15,000 moth. So second choice would be better foils on your boat. Right, exactly. Okay. And that, what would that take? Well, I just bought a brand new foil from Australia that didn't work, so uh -huh. I, I need to do some repair on no. that. Okay. Um, I think, you know, I'm close. I need to take the foils I've got, fix the one that broke, and then get them rigidly fitted to the hull. I mean, that's that's the key, I think. Absolutely no slop, no play, everything's super tight. Okay. And then... So um, you don't have any other problems with your rigging, it's just the yeah, foils? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, but I look hulls, forward... Yeah, I look forward to seeing how you do when you get that straightened away. No, yeah. I'm serious. In the spring? I'm serious. Good, in the spring. good. I, there's a regatta in October up in New York. Okay. Uh, the high performance one design regatta. Okay. And uh, I went up there last year. We didn't have any breeze. I finished second in low riding mode, but you know it, it wasn't foiling stuff. Because it was too um, low of winds. Yeah, it was okay. five knots there. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, for people that don't know about sailing, low riding means you aren't up in the air on your right. foils. It, you're, like, you just kind of look like a normal boat. Exactly. Except it's a mock. Except you're dragging the right. you're dragging right. the foil through right. the water too. So <laughs> you can disconnect the. You know, disconnect the wand and the cable so that at least you don't get the flap down. Yeah. And, and it's neutral. Okay. And that helps a little bit. And the wand, for people that don't know, is that thing that sticks out in the bow of the right. boat that, that changes the... That controls the, right. the flap anchor. Okay. So, okay. Uh, typically when you're low, the wand is forcing maximum down flap to generate maximum lift to get you up. But okay. if there's not enough wind, you just can't get up. You're not going to do it, so you have to neutralize it. And so you're dragging, it. yeah, you're dragging a okay. dragging flap. So what would you like to tell us that we've forgotten to ask you? Um... I don't know. I enjoyed it. I, I guess I was first place in the home built fleet this weekend. That's good. So. That's good. That's excellent. Because <laughs> I was also. And you weren't the oldest here. No, Naomi I wasn't. Naomi was. Naomi was 60, and I'm going to be 55 in December. I think I was yeah. second oldest. And uh, but you know the frustrating thing is you look at Andrew McDougall and he's two months younger than I am, uh, and he finished second last year in the Weymouth Worlds. So oh, how, age, age oh. is not an excuse. It's. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a teacher, so I, I, I go Are back. You, do you I, coach? I go back to work Monday. Oh, really? Do you? Oh my God! Do you coach? I'm uh, the coach of the school's crew team. Okay. Um, Where do you teach? At Bishop Sullivan Catholic High School in Virginia okay. Beach. Okay. So I'm, I'm the math department chair, and uh, you know, it's a fairly small school, 400 kids, but that is small. But I enjoy it. So. Good, and you're the, the crew coach. Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Would you? One of the themes that we've been doing is we like we we obviously notice that the only woman here is Lindsay. Right. So we we just randomly ask, okay, what do you think about women and moths? Um, there were, there's plenty in Europe. Um, oh really? And yeah, okay. I'm not sure why it was uh, Lindsay the only one here. Um, probably a lot of the ladies may have been intimidated a little bit just by the skill. But I mean, if you look at the last British nationals. Um, I believe it was Catherine Knight. There was a woman that finished 20th out of 40 mid fleet. And Lindsay actually was more middle. Yeah. Until she. Yeah. It, what is it? The people who make the least mistakes win. Isn't that the, the idea? Keep the mast up, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. But she actually was more middle right. toward the beginning, and then she dropped down right. as it went on later. But. Um, no, okay, I, I think I think the class is fine for women and kids. Um, this is a, a venue that sort of benefits the heavier guys, obviously. Oh, really? Well, I would think. Because you know, of the strength? The stronger winds. You mean because, because of the, you mean muscles in the wind? Yeah. Because yeah. my understanding in talking to a couple of people is what they come up with is endurance, skill, agility. Yeah. But in this wind, But if you're strength. weighing 140 pounds, you're yeah. at a disadvantage, I would think. Well, Lindsay so. was saying that she wasn't as much in this as she would be in another boat. That she kind of tuned her bang and whatever else Right, she said. I mean, you can you yeah. can tweak the sail shape to yeah. depower it. No, I mean, um, no, no, not the sail shape, the, the controls. Right. So she had more purchase. Oh, I, well, yeah, but that's yeah. The, it's not strength in pulling strings. It's, it's, weight, it's, hiking. it's weight sitting yeah. on the bar. So. Oh, okay, okay, interesting, um, okay. Well, thank you. It's You're been welcome. a pleasure. And it was nice towing you in. Nice, <laughs> pleasant chat. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank